Hi everyone, we're back out on the golf course again today. We're working around the green to get you improved with those scores with three vital score saving shots. Let's go and have a look at some more game changing golf coaching. <laughs> Thanks once again for tuning into Smash Factor Golf Coaching. My name's Natalie Adams. Today we're out on the course again. We're helping you to lower those scores with some vital score uh, saving shots around the green. And we're going to look at how to hit a pitch and run situations where you're going to um, use that shot really well how to hit just a standard pitching wedge with a sort of mid trajectory and then also how to take on that really high flop shot that goes very up and then very down and really doesn't roll much at all. Here we are with situation number one so we finished just short of the green here and uh, you can see that we've got plenty of green to work with there's no particular slopes to come up and over. So this situation, we're having a look at playing much more of a standard chip and run. Uh, we've got no rise to go over at all. Uh, we're pretty level with the flag here. Main thing we want to do here is get more roll on the ball with this shot. So I'm going to choose seven iron to play this shot with. Now, one of the most important things uh, to understand with your different golf clubs is that they will give you a different in the air to land point versus how much roll out you get. So if we think of from the ball to the hole as the complete shot, it's really important that you understand where you're going to land that ball with each different club in order to get the ball close to that hole on a sort of standard conditions, uh, flat, flat level surface, um, seven iron is gonna go so that it will carry about 25% and then roll out 75%, just as a rule of thumb. Again, go and have a look if that's the way it works for you. There is no right or wrong. Just look at where you're chipping the ball from. Chip well, notice where it lands, look at where it then finishes and look at that percentage of where the landing point was for the overall total shot from where you hit from to where it finished. You'll be able to get the ball much, much closer if you do know that. Okay, so we've picked seven iron. The way we're going to play this, again, we don't need a wide stance here. We can just go uh, a narrower stance. I'm going to hold down the handle just for a little bit of comfort for myself and also for a little bit of club head control. Ball, we're going to play uh, center of the feet or just slightly to the right because this is a lower lofted uh, shot and the more you put the ball into the back of your stance or towards your trail foot so right foot for me being a right-handed golfer the lower the trajectory I'll get and the more I push that ball forward towards my lead foot or my left foot the higher trajectory I would get okay so we're going to play from uh, the center of the stance Hands just ahead of the ball. They don't need to be really, really far ahead to deal off that club too much. So just on the left side of the ball. Again, just pressure slightly into that left foot. So 60% pressure in your left foot. Shirt buttons and sternum just to the left of the ball. And we're just going to basically make a pendulum action as though we're putting. So there's no wrist movement at all. We're just going to go back and through. And you can see here with my arms and the club, I create almost like a capital Y shape. And I just want to keep that intact and move my body to the right and then turn my body through and finish in this kind of position here. We haven't turned the club face down towards the floor. So we're going to get height on the shot and also that'll make the shot go towards the target as well. Big thing here is we want to read the green as though we're hitting a putt. So if I just crouch down here and just have a look at the general undulations, the green's moving a little bit from right to left here because of the shoulder of uh, the bunker there. So again, with my landing point, I want to pick a spot about 25% of the way between the ball 
and the hole and just slightly on the right because that ball is going to roll out a lot like a putt would so if there's break on the green we've got to allow for that okay so i'm going to pick my landing spot there about 25 percent of the way out just have a little practice of what i feel is the right swing length i'll put a link into the video here as well to help you with that uh, landing spot control um, really will help you if you work on uh, the skill game that's included in that link because then you'll have a lot more control okay let's see how close we can get this to that landing spot and then let's see if our judgment is good for where it finishes And that's a nice little low trajectory bump and run. Okay, so if we're having a look in this situation here, um, the, the ball here is below the green. Uh, we have got a, a ridge to go up onto the green. So it's, it's not a flat shot. We do need a little bit of elevation here. So uh, my club of choice for this kind of shot would be just your pitching wedge okay it's got plenty of loft on it to help you get over that little ridge we've got some green to work with there so we can get a little bit of run out so pitching wedge i would say you will get just on standard conditions uh you know this is not we're not looking at when it's really really dry or when it's absolutely just chucked it down this is just standard conditions we're not looking at the ball going uphill or downhill it's a pretty flat uh, lie I'd be looking at this going about 60% of the way towards the hole before the first bounce so this club will give you a 60% air and carry and then just a 40% rollout it will vary slightly for you but my first tip for you would be just to go to the uh, practice ground and just have a look don't even hit at the uh uh, the ball uh, the the ball at the hole just play the ball across the green and have a look at where the ball lands from where you've hit it and then where it rolls out to and look at that kind of percentage that you generate for yourself but generally it's going to be about 60 percent air 40 percent roll on the ground and we've got plenty of green to work with here to allow for that okay so standard pitch shot we're going to play the ball uh maybe half the ball left of centre but centred or just to the left we're just talking half a ball we don't need a wide stance here because we're not playing for power we're going for control I would hold down on the handle just for a little bit of comfort um, and also to give you a little bit more club head control we want to pressure slightly into the left foot more than the right foot so I'd be going here about 50 so 60 percent pressure into your left foot just concentrate on keeping your shirt buttons to your sternum just left edge of the ball what we don't want to be doing is pulling back this way at any point trying to help the ball go up in the air the loft on that club face will get the ball into the air for you all you've got to work on doing is making sure that the bottom of the club so the sole or the bounce of the club there connects with the ground where the ball is if you pressure too much into your right foot either as you start or during the swing then you're going to lean back your spine angle will end up this way away from the flag low point for the club will end up before you get to the ball and you'll either hit the ground or you'll skim the ground club will be moving or club head will be moving upwards from the ground and then you'll hit the top of the ball and thin it okay other key bits once we've got that set up position I would just have uh, hands not too far ahead of the ball but certainly not back behind it so either just up over the top of the ball or uh, just up over the club head again it will just give you slightly higher or slightly lower shots so I would play here hands just over the ball and then really important here that we work on turning the body so we don't want to be excessively wristy trying to help the ball go up we need to learn to trust that the loft on the club face will do the work for us so we're going to turn the body to the right 
and then we're going to turn the body to the left making the bottom of the club the sole of the club or the bounce just hit the ground where the ball will be not before it where it is or just after it and that will just ensure you get a clean contact there i'll put a link onto the uh, video here about uh, chipping coins that will really help you especially if you're playing off tight lies but crucial thing here is to work on turning your body towards the target so that the arms can extend out if your body stays really static and doesn't rotate and you use your arms you'll end up more in this kind of position you can see this left elbow buckling you trying to help that ball go up and then the club head as this left arm pulls up this way and the left elbow buckles the club head's coming up away from the ground and you're going to hit the top of the ball so key bits here pressure staying in that left foot about 60 percent shirt buttons over the ball or left edge of the ball turn your body away from the target and then turn your body back towards the target so that the arms can stretch out okay let's have a go at playing this standard pitch shot and let's see how close we can get this ball And here's situation number three, and probably the most difficult shot of the three. So this situation here, it's a very high risk play. Remember, consider your current skill level. If you don't feel confident taking this shot on, you don't have to. You can play to the side of the bunker uh, and then chip in you can chip over this way if you want to if you feel there's more uh, room and then see if you can hold the putt that way especially if you struggle out of bunkers but the main shot that you do want to learn for this is a flop shot it's a high lofted uh, shot it's going to go very vertical land very steeply and because of that there won't be a lot of run forward at all this is a really tough shot with the pin cut close to the bunker and also we've got a downhill slope off the top of the bunker down to that flag. So this is going to be very, very quick and it is a tough shot to get close to the pin. It's a very high risk shot and really only want to play this shot when there is no other option. But if you feel you want to have a go at that, then this is what to do this shot i would widen your stance up a little bit more okay and we're going to play the ball slightly more forward in the stance so kind of inside the lead foot heel here we've taken the most lofted club in the bag for me that's a 58 um, and that's the main thing here is we want height now to get a little bit more height on that we're going to open the club face so if i held the club so that the leading edge is upright and vertical towards the sky to open the club face i want to just rotate that round and then uh, to the right and then i want to put my hands on so if i'm looking here as though there's a clock face in front of me with six o'clock at the hosel and 12 o'clock at the toe of the club i want to rotate that leading edge round to about one o'clock okay and then pop my hands back on don't pop your hands on and then rotate the club face because effectively you haven't added more loft to the club because by the time you hit your hands will rotate back and if you haven't opened the club face and then put your hands on you won't have added more loft by the time you're hitting okay so most lofted club we've rotated the face uh, slightly open to help us get a bit more uh, height on the shot now a lot of you uh, may feel that this is going to hit the ball over to the right but that leading edge is now to the right of the shot it doesn't mean the loft and the angle of that club face when you hit is over to the right so i wouldn't really open the stance up too much more I think I would just stand so that you're pretty parallel to where you want the ball to, to go. Also, when we hit this shot, we're going to lower the hands down a little bit 
lower than usual. And again, that will help to get the loft of the club to uh, hit the ball at the flag and not to the, out to the right. The higher you lift the handle, the more the loft tilts the face to the right. The lower you put the handle, the more that loft makes the face go to the left. We're also going to work here on standing a little bit closer and being slightly more upright with the body because these things are going to encourage us to make a more round and flatter swing. So if I just stand this way onto the camera, with this shot we certainly don't want to be picking the club head up and chopping down and coming in steeply. Okay, So we want to set up standing a little bit closer to the ball, a little bit more upright with the spine uh, than usual, hands a little bit lower and this is going to encourage us now to swing round the body so that we get a much shallower angle as we go back towards the ball. We want that shallow angle to help that uh, club face slide under the ball and we do want, as with all of these shots, some interaction between the club head and the ground. So really important now that we get that low point in the right place. We're going to use the wrists a lot more in this shot. So once we have set up, balls on the inside of the left foot, uh, we've got the shirt buttons right edge of the ball, quite even with the weight, maybe 55% into the, the left foot. And then as we swing back, we're going to make a big swing because we need a lot of height going upwards here. So we're going to make a big swing. You will use the wrist. And as you come back into the shot, we want to get the feeling that you're letting the club head go past the position of the hands and then we're getting this angle in the left wrist here. If we do that we're going to maintain that loft on the club and the ball is going to pop up really nicely into the air. Okay let's have a go. Remember the main focus here is getting that club to bump the ground where the ball is. That will then pop the ball up into the air. So if that's something that you struggle with a little bit, again, I would have a look at uh, the chipping coins video that I've put on that will really show you where you've got the club head touching the ground. If you want to practice this shot, I'd maybe put a couple of penny coins on the floor here and just practice just clipping them off maybe three times, and then same action with the ball there. It would help you as well if you just put the ball on the penny to start with. Uh, that would really help you that when you swing through, you can see if you take that penny or not, because that's what it's all about, is just getting that club to interact well with the ground and let the loft do the work. Okay, let's see how close we can get this. So there we go, three uh, absolutely vital shots to have in your bag when you're next out on that golf course if you want to improve your scoring. But please remember that high lofted lob shot is a last resort. Only take that on if you're feeling completely confident with it. It's something you'll only have to hit maybe once every three or four rounds. So it isn't a shot that you play frequently. The stock shots are going to be much more the chip and run and the standard pitch. But this high lofted flop shot is great if you're in a situation where you've got a tight pin, not a lot of green to work with, a bunker to get over, and it can help you save par. Have a go at those on the practice ground and then take them out onto the course once you're feeling a little bit more confident with them. But they certainly will help you improve your scores. It's another game-changing golf tip. <laughs>